This is the meaning of the Guadalupe regional group of the Lone Prieta chapter of the Sierra Club. It finally comes down to us. Um, and Dave Pochelle will be uh, presenting on uh, open space issues uh, and primarily the activities of, uh, is, it, is it just the Open Space Authority or is it San Jose Open Space? There's a limit of color, we have intersectionality of our collective stories. She said it was her again. She's somewhere else. Or something. Oh, hey, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Um, hey. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to give a, a broad overview of the uh, conservation history of Santa Clara County, uh, but uh, with a particular emphasis on the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority that has really played a key role. So before we get uh, started, I'd just like to announce to people a, uh, a different kind of activity. Uh, do you see a Sierra Club fundraiser on your screens? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is very tentative. So June 12th, which is, I think, a week from Saturday, 2.30, we're, we're going to have both Dave Cortese and Josh Becker. These are our new um, uh, state senators. To, to our region. So I'm um, almost certainly uh, you live in one or the other. And uh, they'll be able to give us information on what we, um, what's going on in, in Sacramento where, where things are going smoothly and where they're not. Uh, if you're interested in, because we don't have the Zoom link or anything set up, if you think you'd be interested in attending the fundraiser, um, then uh, just in the chat, put your put your email, and also many any emails there are uh, for that reason. And I'll I'll send you the invitation. You don't have to accept the invitation, of course. Okay, so um, with that little plug, uh, and I I'll turn it over to Dave to give us. Uh, Great presentation. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone who, who have decided to, to spend some time with us. I appreciate it. Uh, I hope I can make this uh, worth your, your while. Let me uh, share a screen with you um, and do a little slideshow presentation. Um, and I'm going to get started here from the current slide. Let's see. Okay. So uh, are you seeing um, the, the slide? OK, yeah. very good. All right, so um, you know we've got this uh, Loma Prieta chapter, and it's made up of different committees, including um, a conservation committee, which itself is made up of subcommittees. Uh, and I chair the open space uh, subcommittee of this conservation chair. Uh, and also do conservation work for our little regional uh, group here uh, in um, primarily south of, of, of Sunnyvale. Um, so, uh, you know, I've been involved in, in conservation issues for a long time um, and, you know, know some of the history and I thought I would uh, bring you up to date on uh, some of the things that are going on if, you know, seeing if we have time. But um, to give you um, some background on one of the key uh, agencies that um, plays an important role here in Santa Clara County, uh, you know, I just want to introduce you if you're not familiar with the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority. Um, and, um, you know, I'll talk about the history of how it got established and, and the, the kind of things it, it does and why it's, it's important in, in land conservation. Um, so just the context, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go way back in history uh, here, you know, 15,000 years ago, there weren't people here in North America or South America, as far as we know, um, but there were lots of large animals, sometimes called megafauna, that, um, you know, interacted with the landscapes. And so we really don't know exactly how um, 
you know, these landscapes work in totality. Um, so you're probably familiar with mammoths, you know, and this is not dinosaur times. This is just, you know, when uh, humans first came into um, North America, they came into a continent that had uh, mammoths uh, and, and lots of animals. And it's, it's actually true with basically all the continents uh, outside of, outside of uh, Antarctica that uh, they had, uh, you know, megafauna just like Africa has today. But when people came in and in time, you know, we've caused the extinction of most of them. Um, and I, some of you may know uh, Roger Castillo, he's, he's active uh, in protecting the fish and the, the uh, Guadalupe River uh, salmon and uh, the steelhead uh, that migrate. Uh, and uh, as he was poking around, he discovered some mammoth bones uh, and they've got a nice little story on the, at the Children's Discovery Museum, a little video and stuff, it's kind of interesting. But um, so I'm just giving you that context. But you know more than just these, like I say, the, you're probably familiar with mammoths. But there were uh, various species of lion and and bison and camels, and you know all sort of. So these are um, list of animals and the date that they became extinct. You know, or how many years ago. Um, and so I just want to give you an idea that there was a lot. Um, you know, including some species we're not really familiar with, you know, giant ground slaws. Uh, and, um, you know, it's kind of a shame, but the situation is different today. Um, you know, so uh, going back, you know, more like 8,000 years ago, the uh, culture of the, the indigenous peoples, um, developed to the point where they really uh, maximize their resources with uh, managing fire so that, um, you know, they would burn some land. Um, and the first, you know, couple of years, they would get the grasses that they needed for, you know, say, seeds that they ate, but also for basket weaving. Uh, and then the shrubs would come in, provide berry, you know, in later years, and then trees would come in and, you know, support the game animals that they wanted. But these lands were managed for 8,000 years and really a pretty stable and pretty sustainable as far as we can tell um, for a very long period. You know, I just can't imagine our culture, you know, the way it is lasting 8,000 years. You know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> we, I, I hope so. Um, but unfortunately for at least the indigenous people, um, the, when the Spaniards came uh, and colonized uh, California in the uh, late 1700s and made their way up to uh, the, the Bay Area, um, you know, the population of, of the indigenous people was probably 10 to 20,000. Uh, and it plummeted as they got diseases, as they were basically enslaved uh, and worked to death. Um, and so um, it had an effect on the landscapes. The, the indigenous people were no longer managing it and the Spaniards brought cattle uh, and their way of life. And the cattle changed our landscapes. Um, if you're interested, you know, the, the California Indian, um, uh, it, it different uh, peoples, it was really diverse, uh, diverse languages. There's some great information if you're interested uh, in a talk uh, by uh, Mark Helkema uh, through Post. Um, I, you know, if you're interested in, in learning more about how the indigenous peoples lived, uh, it's really, uh, he's got a series of, of lectures that are just fantastic. Um, so the, our landscapes, uh, you, know, you know, at that time, you know, or up until, you know, fairly recently, um, were um, grasslands and oak woodlands and wetlands and uh, you know the riparian areas you know that near the rivers where the uh, vegetation of willows and, and things like that were really dense um, were really wide you know we have like five percent left of what they were and even the areas you know in, in the south bay where the streams look pretty good you know, they've been channelized and they're much straighter. They, they used to wind about and, and such. Um, but um, 
you know, if you look at these, uh, the beige areas and the darker browns, these are oak woodlands um, where the, the, we call it a woodland when the, the tree canopies are really tight together. Um, and then when it's more sparse, we call it a, a savanna. Um, and so um, the uh, SFEI, uh, San Francisco Estuary Institute has some pretty cool documentation and, and, and they've uh, documented what uh, we believe the original uh, tree cover was and the various species. Um, and uh, they, they also have some pretty cool information about what it is like today and some ideas about how we could, you know, re, you know, do some re-oaking of uh, Silicon Valley uh, in, and, uh, you know, restore some of our, our native tree cover. Um, but unfortunately, you know, we've lost most of that, at least the valley floor. Um, there is one little park that I love a lot. Uh, it's, it's only about, you know, 50, 60 acres, depending upon how you map it. Um, but it, it's got some valley floor, oak woodland, um, which is, you know, almost all gone now. Um, but because of that, I think it's really cool. And, and there's still some interesting, this is a bit of a tangent, I know, but um, there's still some artifacts of, uh, the indigenous peoples that live there, uh, you know, grinding holes uh, where they ground acorns. And I thought this was kind of interesting. I found this, this cross or a compass um, on this rock that um, I, I believe it's a compass because it's pretty much, uh, you know, goes north, south, uh, east, west with uh, you're looking south from here and due south as you go out, is um, it, it seems to be kind of pointing to Mount Ominum. I don't know if you're familiar with Mount Ominum. I, can you see my cursor? Okay, so this is Mount Ominum, and it is of uh, particularly uh, important uh, uh, cultural value to the Amamutsan. Uh, and I, you know, I've met several times uh, Val Lopez, their tribal chair. Uh, and he, he says it's important because, uh, you know, these peaks are, are closer to the creator, you know, being up high. And so it, this is a particularly important uh, feature to them. Um, and I asked him about this compass, you know, hey, what, what, what do you think that is? And he said, well, you know, actually the Catholic Church stamped crosses as a way of establishing don dominance. Um, and he, oops. He's a, a very interesting guy. Uh, if you ever get a chance to listen to him speak, I recommend it. Uh, he really doesn't pull any punches. Um, and, uh, but anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, but I just want to expose you to uh, the fact that, you know, these uh, things are of interest are still out there, um, including this, some remnants of valley floor oak woodland. And so this is what much of Santa Clara Valley uh, would have looked like uh, back in the day. Um, and you can see a little bit of it in the Guadalupe Oak Grove, um, with the exception of, uh, and if, if people have questions or if you wanna correct me on anything I misstate or if I'm off base, uh, please do. Um, but, um, so this is uh, in oak woodland uh, with these grasses. Um, but I mentioned the Spaniards came in with the, the grasses and their cattle, I mean, with the cattle. And with the cattle came the European grasses and they spread throughout, uh, particularly Northern California. And so most of our grasslands are European grasses. These are not California uh, grasses. You know, when you see the golden hills of California, you're looking at Mediterranean Europe uh, primarily. Um, but the oaks and stuff, this is how it once would have been. Uh, and so, you know, the, this uh, ranching with the cattle expanded during the Mexican period. And, you know, of course that make, made it harder for the indigenous people uh, that were still uh, trying to hang on to their way of life. Um, but, uh, you know, it impacted their game and uh, the grasses that they needed and such. Um, 
And so I just want to let you know that we, we still do have some places where we have good native grasses and wildflowers that represent the, the way California once was. And they're protected because um, they live in serpentine soils uh, that uh, resist the growth of the European grasses. And so what you're seeing in this photo is in the foreground, the native uh, plants, California native plants. And in the background is, you know, a different soil type that has allowed the grasses to come in. Uh, the, the little photo in the inset uh, just shows how uh, while cattle were the original source of the problem of the grasses, they're now one of the solutions in that they, they basically mow it down and allow the native grasses to have it or the native uh, plants, excuse me, um, you know, to have a chance to compete. And so in that photo on the right hand side is where it has been grazed and on the left uh, with no grazing. And you see these grasses get up tall and they choke out the native wildflowers. Um, this is again on Coyote Ridge where we have serpentine soils. Um, and so they're still mostly native plants. And in fact, in this photo, I don't see any non-natives. These are all California native uh, plants and grasses. So you see those uh, green clumps. Those are our state grass. You know, it's not marijuana. Uh, maybe it should be, but the, our state grass is this thing here called purple needle grass. Uh, the seeds look like little purple needles. Um, and they're also called, sometimes called bunch grasses because you see they're grow, they grow in these little bunches. Uh, the reason why they're in bunches is because they're perennial. Unlike a lot of the invasive grasses that are annual that grow really fast and thick and put out a ton of seeds and then die over the summer, um, many of the native grasses um, live all year round. They survive the, the droughts of the summer by having really deep root systems. Uh, their root systems can be 10, 15, 20 feet deep. Um, and so and anyway, this is what you know our, our grasslands uh, once looked like um, and still do look like on Coyote Ridge. Um, and this is uh, another photo from Coyote Ridge of your wildflowers. Um, of course, so, you know, there was the Sp Spanish period and then the Mexican period and then gold was discovered and, and we had more changes coming. And so the Americans poured in, they did hydraulic mining and all of that sediment filled in a lot of the bay. They uh, shunt, uh, you know, hunted and, and, and caused a great decline in a lot of the animals, um, including tule elk um, that they th had thought uh, were extinct um, until just a handful were discovered down in Bakersfield in the late 1800s. Um, in um, the South Bay, you know, most of the gold, you know, we didn't have gold, but we did have mercury. Um, and so we had the new, uh, new Almaden mine. The, the early uh, pioneers recognized that, uh, you know, the Indians had gone to this site uh, and use the uh, mercury ore to paint themselves and to paint, you know, it's red colored and, and, and they would use it as paint. Um, so they knew this mercury ore was there. Um, but so they, um, you know, we, we have a mine in New Almaden. Um, un unfortunately, you know, we're still dealing with, you know, mercury is pretty toxic. And, and so now we have mercury issues in our waterways. Um, of course, you know, then, um, Santa Clara Valley, you know, uh, during this period, you know, they cut down a lot of the oak trees uh, to make way for agriculture and, you know, for the wood, wood source and stuff. So much of Santa Clara Valley were orchards uh, to feed, you know, fruit to the rest of the country uh, and the area until, you know, after World War II, when the Cold War developed and there became more intensive uh, defense uh, work being done and, you know, with the advances in the computer technology and HP, um, you know, we had, ex you know, the beginnings of um, Silicon Valley and much of the South Bay became, you know, sprawling houses. Um, and we've pretty much just finished uh, filling in the valley. 
But uh, there had been some concern about this sprawl. Um, in, I guess it's 1956, um, county parks, you know, have protected a lot of land 